wonderful Brian Mulligan! I can't say I've ever been introduced like that before. <laughs> okay, I've come to talk about a serious topic. Uh, we have a problem in higher education in the developed world. We have just too much of it. Uh, it's uh, We don't do it very well, we teach the wrong stuff, they keep forgetting this stuff and it costs a fortune. Now, my name is Brian and I work in online learning research and development. Uh, I'm, I'm not a young academic. I, I turned 60 last summer, so this is a sort of a, I suppose it's sort of a bucket list thing for me, okay? <laughs> uh, it's something I sort of feel I should do before I die, and I may well die tonight. <laughs> uh, anyway, where was I? I was talking about the state of education. Sorry about the phone. I was at a gig the other night, and there was a... Uh, you know the way they're going on about young people and their phones? There was two old ones in a the corner. They weren't talking to each other. They were on their phones. Isn't that terrible? Somebody's doing a gig and two people are on their phones. It's worse when the person doing the gig is on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, I, I work in online learning or development and research. I deliberately twisted around development research because I don't really like research. You know, I've had to do a bit of it. Uh, I'm no good at it. Uh, all that bloody stuff. Statist data and statistics. Actually, I'm here with a few maths lectures. They don't even like statistics. Um, so it's fine. Good research is a wonderful thing, and I'll read it when it's good. But as I'll leave that to unpaid PhDs and underpaid postdocs, and hopefully they'll do something for me. OK, uh, sorry about this. Uh, as I say, I've turned 60, and I have a bit of the Alzheimer's disease, and uh, sure, we'll, anyway. OK, so I'm not trained to do what I do at work, OK? I'm actually a civil engineer, but I, I'm not trained to teach. I'm all right at that, I'm not very good at it, OK? I'm not trained to do research. I'm terrible at that. Uh, I'm not trained in computing. I'm OK at that, and I'm not trained in online learning, which is what I work at. Uh, so it's, it's a strange reflection on higher education that they would let me do it at all when education is based on the idea that you're supposed to have uh, be trained or get an education to do a job well. But anyway, I, I sort of have phrases to cover this and I always say, um, if I can remember what it is, I always say, never wait till you're good at something till you do it. Or another one is, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing badly. And that's why I'm here tonight. <laughs> OK, this bloody landscape phone. Would you? I've, I've broken it. Anyway, so I'll back to education and what a terrible state it's in. Um, there's an old joke, if you don't mind me telling an old joke, about uh, the culture and the tourist. Uh, this is one like Hal Roach would have told in the 1960s. 1940s, <laughs> whatever. Uh, the, the, the tourist comes up to the Colchi and says, could you tell me the way to Dublin? And the Colchi turns and says, well, I wouldn't start from here anyway. <laughs> and that's what I sort of feel about making education better. <laughs> we would probably start from scratch if we could, but we can't. So we have to do that. Um, so, sorry about that joke. I stole that joke. I'll probably steal all the jokes. And as you know, plagiarism is a serious issue in academia, and I have a problem with plagiarism. It is. Sure, I love quoting other people's work. In fact, I prefer quoting other people's work than doing the work myself. Uh, so, but I always worry about attributing it correctly. Uh, so, um, in fact, I'm, I'm sort of worried tonight about, like, could I get in trouble for stealing jokes. So there might be somebody here from the Performing Rights Association. And so, you know, keep a watch out for it. It's not so much that I'm stealing jokes. It's just I'm not performing right. <laughs> OK, now I want to talk about uh, a book. I stole that one as well. Uh, <laughs> that's from the, from the goodies from the 1960s. OK, uh, I, I want to talk. I read this book. Uh, it came out there in January. It's called uh, Why Education is a Waste of Time and Money. And uh, it's very an int interesting angle the guy has, because he says um, 
It's fairly clear from the statistics that, and this guy really goes into the statistics, he's an economist, oh my god, those chapters were such a bore. Anyway, he said, it's fairly clear from the statistics that people with an education do earn more money. But in actual fact, if you trawl the statistics, you find out that actually most of the money they earn, or actually only 20% of the extra earnings is due to uh, the stuff they learned. And the other part of it is uh, due to a, a phenomenon called signaling, which means sending a signal to the employer that they have the right stuff to be an employee. Now, the concept of signaling is really interesting because it's where you're doing one thing to signal another. It's not intrinsically a value itself. And in a, a good example of this, I think it comes from biology, is where the term comes from, is the peacock's tail. You know this thing about the peacock has this wonderful tail that's absolutely useless, and the only thing it's for is for pulling peahens. Okay? It sort of says, look at uh, how fit I am. All the energy that I can produce to produce this wonderful tail, okay, uh, that's of no use, but and the peahen sees this and says, that is some dude. Okay, <laughs> so, um, no, there's examples in humans as well, like playing football. That's wasting energy, and it's really about pulling girls as well, you know. So, uh, nerds here, please make note of that, by the way. Um, and the other thing is, uh, wasting resources shows that you have, you know, that you are fit and able to generate wealth. So you could say, jewelry, or apple products. <laughs> okay, um, right, I've been in Sligo a long time. I've been here since 1984 in IT Sligo. And it always reminds me of the, the old joke about the, the courting couple. Uh, there may be some young people here, courting, that means doing a line. Isn't that the phrase you use nowadays? Or, so, so, the, for going out, going out. I don't know, shifting. They're all, I, I'm, going through, I'm going through the decades here, aren't I? I started in the 40s and I got to the 60s, the 70s. Okay, uh, so they've been going out and the lady says to the gentleman, do you think we should get married? And he says, at our age, who'd have us? <laughs> <laughs> and that's me and IT Sligo. So I got bored, I got into online distance learning and got that, it was something to be doing. And I got lucky, it was really very successful. And we did very well in it. So um, uh, I used to run a conference and just for people sharing war stories in learning technologies, online learning. And uh, I, I used to wonder why nobody, why is nobody in the country copying us? And then I went around and found that they all wanted to do research presentations at the conferences. Nobody just wanted to tell a story about what they were doing. They were all collecting data and all that sort of thing. And then I, I realized that all the other colleges, what they were doing is they were putting research people in charge of actually getting some work done, which is like putting a, a research engineer in, in charge of a manufacturing plant. So that explains IT Sligo's great success. Um, <laughs> anyway, listen, um, uh, and the other thing was they were very interested in quality of the learning experience. All I wanted to do was allow people to do the bloody courses, you know. In fact, I, I, I gave a conference presentation and it was called The Power of Traditional Teaching Methods Online. And I was going to put, you know the way you put these cool subheadings under a, the presentation. I was going to call, we've been teaching badly for years, why not teach badly online? <laughs> I put this to one of my colleagues and he says, he says, no, I don't think you'd better actually do that one because uh, we don't teach badly, we teach okay. <laughs> so we do teach okay and they love it. So I'm just going to finish up here. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to make huge changes to higher education, however it needs it, but I would like to suggest one small change, that we completely stop full-time uh, higher education. That all the students should do the leave and start, go out and get a job, and they can study online, because that's what I do, and it works. Uh, and it works, we know it's better, uh, we know it's better, and it's a lot cheaper. Now, a lot of people say to me, what about the social development of the person in college? Now. My brother went into the civil service in those days, in the early 1970s, and I said to him, you're not as socially developed as me, because I went to university. 
No. You see, you, you know what he said to me, don't you? <laughs> he said, and I even said to my son, who did his leaving cert last year, I said, don't go to college. You know, go out and get a job. You can study whatever you need online. And he said to me, Dad, I hated school. This is the only education that's any fun, and you're going to deny it to me. So I know my progress is going to be hard. So I just have to be a bit philosophical and realize all I'm doing is passing the time until I'm dead. And just, and just it should be done as pleasantly as possible. And little improvements that always give you a bit of a buzz. So I'll just, I'd like to finish off with a prayer. Okay, God, okay, you can put your hands together if you want. God, grant me wine to accept the things I cannot change, coffee to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thank you very much. Yeah.